Namaste. I am Gloria Grace Rand and welcome to Live, Love, Engage podcast. And as, as always happens on a Friday, I am delighted to have a guest with me. Uh, and this is a wonderful person that I have known for several years now. We've been through a lot together, attended uh, some personal development workshops together. We were in a mastermind program together and she is an amazing woman in her own right. Her name is Brenda R. Bryan. And I just realized I have no idea what the R stands for. I don't know if you'll share that with us later, but sure. Um, what? Sure. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and she is a kick-ass inspirational speaker, the diviner of human potential. Uh, she's a transformational coach and mastermind facilitator who supports women to unmask and nurture their genius, empowering them to live in the strength of their passion. And so she has numerous programs. I know one we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Uh, she does one-on-one -on -one coaching, but she's got a program, Raise Your Voice program, and a Be Bold, Be Brave, Be Powerful Speakers Club, which is very cool. And through all of these programs that she does and, and um, at workshops that she conducts and stages around the country where she's speaking, she demonstrates authentic, warm-hearted humor with a deep wealth of knowledge of how important communication is to feminine power. And I can attest to her humor because she did stand up one time. I saw a video of it and it was very funny. She is an amazing woman. She's got so much more that I will probably put some of this into the show notes. But basically, I would say she has stood for women's empowerment for quite a long while. And she's most recently the founder and CEO of It Must Be Said Productions which is a platform for stories that need telling. And stories is a big thing right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's totally okay. big. Yeah, I, I, I hear that a lot. I've actually, I've actually myself gone through a training last year where we were um, talking about uh, stories. It was with uh, Bo Eason. And um, it's, it's so important, I think. But we're going to get to that in a second. But first off, just officially, welcome. Welcome, Brenda. I'm so Thank glad, you. glad to be here. Thank you, Gloria. <laughs> well, yeah, as I mentioned, you've got, uh, you've got a couple of new programs or fairly new, I guess, maybe they're, I don't know, a year or two old, I guess now. Um, but this raise your voice and the be bold, be, be brave, be powerful speakers club. So what are these all about exactly? And, and how do they help women in particular? Well, my focus is on the empowerment of women, and that's been a 50-year journey uh, working in the women's movement. And um, we started out telling stories back in, uh, in the feminist circles called Women Encounters Groups, and that's where we started to tell our stories. And, and so now that it's kind of recycled around, I'm kind of giggling because it's like, you know, uh, all, all things come around. <laughs> and the raise your voice and the, uh, is one aspect of this, and the raise your voice is really about how do we do our inner work to know what it is for us to be worthy of who we really want to be? And, you know, we've been so conditioned to uh, play small and to stay safe and to follow the rules and to um, uh, only speak when we're spoken to and don't get too big for your britches. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, I work principally with women entrepreneurs. And so uh, when we see the kind of the patterns, the beliefs and the behaviors, that, that, that they're engaged in and, and they have no idea of the unconscious patterns they're playing in. So uh, with all the work that I've done as a transformational coach, um, you know, the work is really about owning our own, owning and loving ourselves more deeply. And to do that, we really have to kind of uh, look at what is painful for us and, and what is our perspective on that pain. It's, it's, it's all a story we've adapted from some part of our lives. So the Raise Your Voice is really about kind of how do we find our power by uh, opening up to um, healing that which needs to be healed and claiming that which needs to be claimed and stepping into another aspect of the divine feminine by listening to our intuition, by following our guidance, by being more emotionally intelligent, by presenting more awareness, by doing the things 
that we need to be doing in order to step uh, into a higher vibration of our, of our own potential. And so that's really what the Raise Your Voice program is about. Um, the uh, Be Bold, Be Brave, Be Powerful Speakers Club is, is a jump off from that because um, in working with women entrepreneurs and, and doing the amount of networking I do, which is quite a bit, uh, mm -hmm. that's where I build community and have fun and, and engage. Uh, what I was watching were people kind of being really shy about, I don't know what to say. I don't really like speaking in front of groups. Uh, you know, um, you know, this is really hard for me. And it's like, I've spent so much time really honing my skill as a speaker going through Toastmasters and um, different programs and, and aspiring to be a, 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 an inspirational speaker for over 20 years. I went, Oh, this is a, this is something that I can actually kind of, hold a shape for in a really good way because I know what they're talking about. I know what they're, what they're, uh, what they're afraid of. I know what the story is and to take that along with kind of like the, uh, the, um, body center therapy work that I do and apply it to, to speaking uh, platform is, has been really cool. So the focus for the, for the speakers club is to really find uh, to provide a safe and sacred place where women can take the risk to discover what, what their true voice is mm -hmm. and not be put down for saying, Oh, you never had that experience or, or why are you complaining about that? Or, or, you know, everybody has that. So we don't do that in the club. We, we provide a safe place for you to um, take the risk to, to hear what needs to be said about yourself uh, for yourself so that you can, can know your own story at a deeper level. Most of the people I know, I have life experiences and have put them in a bottle and put them on a shelf and, and went, well, that's that I've done that. And, right. or that doesn't matter. And, and I don't need to pay attention to that anymore. I, I'm, you know, I'm not wounded from that anymore. I've had my three relationships and even though they all <laughs> went bad, I don't really have to revisit them. Um, so in actually denying that all of those experiences have helped to formulate and implant an, an understanding of ourselves and a belief about ourselves, we're actually uh, denying access to what I call our superpowers. Mm -hmm. Because in every lesson we've learned, we've actually developed a muscle. We've survived it, we've come to a new opinion about it, we've learned something from it, we've moved ourselves for it because of it. And so when we can actually uh, start to really dig a little deeper into what story have we not told because we're afraid to tell them or we don't consider them important, but are actually part of the fiber of who we are, can actually be the, the, um, the leverage for, for, for uh, up-leveling us to where we've been stuck or where we've been holding back or where we've not valued our life experience. And, and so that's a huge component of the Speakers Club because it's a safe space to actually start telling a story that you never thought had any value and to, and to learn the art of storytelling right. and to learn to put the detail around that. But right. also while you're telling your own story, you're also learning uh, to be confident in speaking. And so, uh, and we get feedback and the feedback provides an opportunity for, for people to kind of go, oh, that opening really worked, or that sentence was powerful, or, or you know, you kind of wandered off there, <laughs> <kind of laughs> back to the story, right? Yeah. And so it's just a, a safe place to kind of learn how constructing um, our own story and being authentic about it and being vulnerable about it is actually going to help us uh, really reach the tribe that we're trying to reach in order to promote our business because that's what people are looking for. Some right. level of authenticity and some level of vulnerability uh, that's honest and true. And then that also helps us be invincible because it means that we've, we've taken the parts of us that we've been afraid to show and we've decided what to do with them. Absolutely. Right? They don't have to be shared out loud to the world. That's right. not why we're working with them. But if, we, if we're always denying that that piece of us is there and we never access it, then what it does is it actually caps our ability to raise our vibration even higher. Mm -hmm. And so that's the fun part of what, what's, uh, what the women in the club have been experiencing. You know, and over and above that, of course, we're crazy, uh, crazy fun people. So we laugh a lot and, and you know, we get really serious. And then I 
then I crack them up a little bit and kind of break over, break open that little, that little tight little wound up piece that we get into. And so we have a lot of fun because we're building support for one another, we're building community, and we're creating a safe enough environment for us to truly try on expressions of ourselves that haven't been safe in other environments. And that's a huge piece. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you meet in person, I take it. I meet online three times. Mm-hmm. We meet every week. We meet a weekly, for, a weekly for an hour and a half online and then two oh, hours okay. in person at, at this point. But what I'm looking to do is to, um, is to create more uh, online presence so that I can be more national and then create more in-person masterminds. So people coming for two to three days to a location near you <laughs> where we can where we can do the um the building and the bonding and the have the oh, the cool. deeper uh you know in-person experiences that are so beneficial to to the growth piece you know this yeah um it's it's good that we have this this particular modality called called zoom and and, mm-hmm. and all the other things like that's that's amazing to me what this can do but the in-person stuff, you know, you get the hugs, you, yeah. you, you get, you, you feel, in, you get bonded with people, you make lifelong friends like you and I have. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've made, you know, we've gone forward in a lot of ways over the last couple of years, even though we're not in, in group together. And right. that's the friendships and the support and the empowerment that really is helping everybody. Um, know that they are worthy and know that what they want um, they can get and they can get it with some support. Mm, that's awesome. So uh, what would, you know, in working with uh, women, especially women entrepreneurs and even through the speakers or your speakers club or with one-on-one coaching, what do you see is the, the biggest challenge that women face today? And, and how well, do you go about helping them deal with that? I think we've taken the blue pill, which is what the biggest challenge is, is, is that we're not equal and that we're not worthy. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's been show ram- rammed down our throats for, for you know, 2,000 years. How could we possibly kind of um, not be affected by that? And then, of course, it affects men, too, because they are also caught in the same, the same bind around structures that are, that are oppressive. Mm. And so I think that... that um, you know, what it helps us do when we face that, when we get to acknowledge what it, are our daily obstacles, what are our challenges, when we hear that other people are having those challenges, when we share that in a group setting, we realize that it's not just me, which is quite often because a lot of entrepreneurs, because they're solo entrepreneurs, think they're doing it all by themselves and they're the only one that's having that problem. <laughs> they're the right. only one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, having an environment where you get to realize that oh I've got comrades in this and and we're we're facing some of the same obstacles and let's have coffee and figure out kind of what what are you doing about it and here's what I'm doing about it and how can we how can we leverage each other's life experiences to in a way that helps me not have to reinvent the wheel and um, so so there's that uh, I think the um, you know a lot of challenges is we are still in isolation. Um, and a lot of the isolation is not, you know, we're seeing social media, we're seeing Facebook, we're seeing, you know, uh, ways that people are engaging, but they're not actually engaging eye to eye, person to person, right. quite often. And, and, and so that, that isolation actually keeps us, keeps the beliefs and the habits and the behaviors actually embedded because we don't make those um, deeper, more meaningful contact that has people saying, I heard you had this goal, but I haven't seen you work on it. Mm. I know you want to do this, but but I haven't I haven't heard anything about it in quite some time. What's keeping you from doing that? Or yeah. I hear that you're trying this, but you're running into some obstacles. Let's have a look at what you're doing and see if there's a, a different way forward. And so um, there is a need for women to really bond with each other and create meaningful relationships and deep relationships so that we understand that, that we are loved, that we can be nurtured, that we can nurture ourselves, that we can, we can hold our, ourselves up in pride and in grace. And um, that's, that's missing for a lot of women. Yeah, I think one of the things that where we've gotten, 
or maybe in the past, yeah, because we've been so isolated, I think when we can start coming together and starting to collaborate more, and, and I know I'm involved in some groups that, that talk about that, you know, let's look for ways where we're not competing against one another, but find ways for, for collaboration. What, uh, what's your take on that? Like, how important is that? <laughs> well, it's inherent in women to be mm -hmm. to be collaborative to be cooperative they do it around their children we've done it around so many levels and I think that that's one of the <clears throat> excuse me got a tickle in my throat <clears throat> one of the things that we're up against is we're we're, we're told to fit into a, a to be a, a square peg in a round hole which is we're told that we're supposed to do it like men do it and that's the only way to do it. And right. reality is, is that they have tried, they've had their hand at it and they've not succeeded. So why would we continue to do it their way? I ask you. Yeah. So, so, you know, getting out of being, be, seeing each other as being comp, um, competitive, getting out of the scarcity mindset, getting out of the, uh, you know, win, win above all else, you know, what, you know, redefining our success, redefining what, um, what, what nurtures us, what helps us, what helps the community, what helps our business is really about that kind of the, the co-creation, the cooperation and the collaboration that comes from, from a, a, an inherent way that women have worked for thousands of years and have been told that it's that it's uh you can't be successful that way but mm -hmm. that's not what we're seeing yeah what we're seeing is the very opposite of that because what we've also seen is is that in denying the access to all of that the world has not gotten to be a better place so it's time for some for some new uh, in some new old ways, right? Because it's, yeah. it's, these are very old ways that have been, that have been um, um, suppressed and have been made fun of and, and told that it's ridiculous. And, and mm -hmm. how can you make money if you're not competing? And that again is, is not women's ways. And if we can, we can um, earn an amazing uh, abundant life by staying tapped into the divine feminine and the intuition and following our guidance and creating lasting and deep relationships that are based on integrity. Mm, yeah, that's a perfect segue because you actually just mentioned the phrase that I was going to ask you about next is that, um, you know, we do hear a lot about d the divine feminine and I actually belong to a, a wise woman circle. We meet once a month. And so, you know, we talk about that a little bit, for, but maybe for other people who are listening to this podcast, they've stumbled across it and haven't heard that term before. Um, what does divine feminine mean to you and, and why is it important for us to, uh, pay attention to it and maybe honor it a bit, especially as women. Um, well, there is the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And, and when we talk about divine, we're not talking about earthly plane stuff. We're not talking about the male versus female. We're talking about energetically kind of a, 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 an energy that creates things. Divine feminine is about creation we're creators and you know uh, women women make babies women you know make crafts women make households women garden women create and so being tapped into that divine feminine is really about tapping into the power of our creation ability and the power to really nurture and bring forward something new and different and so that's why it's so important to to be utilizing that at this time especially because we need something new to emerge especially in this country other countries are doing things different and and we can look to them and say what succeed what has what has succeeded and what has not but we have not incorporated that into this country's politic or way of doing things or view of how to really nurture a community yeah. um, and so this is our opportunity in the divine feminine to really create a new outcome for our businesses, for ourselves, for our families, for our youth, for our environment. And, and you know, we just need to get cur curious about it. Like, what is it, this, what is the story that's getting in the way of, of, me, of me actually believing that I can do that? Like, who told me that story? And how do I hand it back? You know, so right. curiosity being a really important piece to, to 
um, coming and presencing what's going on for yourself, telling the truth about it, and then being creative about how you can actually ask him different questions about it. And we're capable of that. And we're capable of really taking all of these problems that are worldwide mm -hmm. and actually resolving them through, through stepping out of stepping into curiosity and stepping out of the mindset of, of, Oh, it's always been done that way or there's no way that that could happen. Well, we've known, you know, we see examples of like, who who thought that somebody putting uh, air mattresses in an empty room would start a million, million, billion dollar business. Right, right exactly. I yeah. mean, come on, you know, or Uber. I mean, you know, I mean, right. we've, we've had limited viewpoints and people have, have stepped out of those viewpoints and created amazing things that are, that are, um, beneficial to the economy and beneficial to individuals and so we have the capacity for that and I think we need to be a lot more curious about how can we be uh, applying ourselves to that divine feminine as a way to actually hold, hold open that creation that creation part of us yeah absolutely and I think it really comes down to a lot of it is just starting to learn to trust yourself and to trust your intuition and 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 to know that you do have answers or even if you maybe don't just by getting quiet and 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 connecting with the divine feminine the divine masculine that ideas can come to you um, even if you don't necessarily think you have it right away but just by asking um, it can come and, and be and part of also being in like the you know the speakers groups and masterminds that you hold also when you bring many more people together that's when you you know it's like really the sky's the limit where all these you get all these great brains together and all of that energy starts flowing and it can really come up with some fantastic ideas well we were born with the answers what's happened is is they they've been they've been uh, i'm going to say this they've been slapped out of us we they've been suppressed because we've needed to fit in and 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 have a family and be fed and be housed and get a job and yeah. so all of those conditions have really um smothered uh what we came in knowing yeah. about ourselves yeah. so meditating uh, being in nature uh eating healthy you know controlling your substance things that are actually healthy for us will actually open up the floodgates to new information yeah, absolutely. And I know just for me, when I'm not doing those things, then I do find it much harder to just, you know, even deal with things because it's like, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, sometimes I think you have, you get like a sugar hangover and, yeah. and it's like, you know, and the brain just shuts down because you've been poisoning it with the wrong types of stuff. So it's important. What I, I guess as we as we wrap up here, what would be like if you had to tell women one thing that you know either either they could do or 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 something that one last piece of advice that you think would be relevant? What well, what would you share? Hmm. Hmm. I think I would share open to curiosity, like be curious, ask questions about everything. Hmm. You know, why do I believe this? What is the belief I'm holding? What can I be doing differently? What is it I know already that I'm not utilizing? And, and it's like, you know, and that's, we're not asking enough questions about what do I already know? Mm. And so curiosity as it was in conversations, curiosity about being creative, curiosity about, about our own programming and asking questions about like, what, what is keeping me stuck? What's the belief behind this? When we start getting curious about that, um, things will open up because you'll go, Oh, I, I didn't realize I thought that way. Or, Oh, you know, I'm here. I'm hearing like, I'm not, I'm not really um, owning my femininity or I'm not really uh, stepping into my full power. Well, what, what would that look like? You know, cause it's all sitting right there. We were born with it. And, and now it's kind of a, it's a reawakening or a reclaiming and a reframing of all that for it to become our superpowers. Awesome. Well, that is wonderful advice to leave <laughs> you leave with today. Um, just briefly, if someone wanted to get involved, uh, you know, get in contact with you, maybe learn more about like the speakers clubs, for instance, what's the best way for them to reach you? It's all on my website, which is www.brenda, B-R-E-N-D-A-R, 
Jacobs, which stands for Rebecca, by the way, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N.com. And so um, there's a, a button there if you want to set up a strategy session or you want to get a free download that I've got on there or anything like that, or you want to ask me any questions, just go there and, and let me know how I can support you. And I'd love to see you um, step up and see how I can, how you can change your life because we all need to. Absolutely. Doesn't matter where you're at in the totem pole. There's more to be done. That's for sure. Yep. Life <laughs> is a journey. We are never, a journey. We're never done with it until the very last second. And even then, who knows what happens after that? We're, there's another journey, just probably in another dimension. And it'll... It, well, there's, there's the kicker. It's like we're only, we're only seeing things from a very small uh, perspective in terms of what dimensions are available to us. Yeah. So, you know, when we, when we start opening to different aspects of things, new dimensions do open up. So mm -hmm. let's play. Let's have yeah. some fun. And playing in, in the realms of, of quantum jumps into new possibilities. It's, it's, it's time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. And just as a reminder to everyone listening, to, if you liked what you're hearing today and you want to hear more, make sure that you subscribe to Live, Love, Engage on the podcast platform of your choice, uh, whether it's iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify. I think I'm on, I'm on just about every, every one of them, which is good. Um, and if you would leave us a review and a rating, that would be great as well. And until next time, I just urge you to live fully, to love deeply, and engage authentically. So. Oh.